Hey, I'm Richie Castellano. Welcome to my studio. I got a new toy and I got to talk about it. Uh, this is the Line 6 Helix. I've been lusting after it for a while and looking at it, checking out the specs online, and I finally pulled the trigger on one. And um, I know a lot of my friends online have been asking me about it and how I like it and how I'm using it. Um, I just got this three days ago. So I just opened it up and I used it on a couple of gigs this weekend and I want to show you guys how I'm using it and I'm sure this will change as I get more familiar with the unit but I found that it was really easy to use and I got it going really quickly and so here's how I have it set up and along the way I can talk about the features as I'm showing you my sounds. Um, when I play with Blue Oyster Cult I use four main sounds. Uh, I use a clean, a, uh, an amp on the edge of breakup, a crunchy like heavy rhythm sound, and a lead sound. And within those sounds, I have effects that I turn on and off. Uh, the Helix allowed me to even go a step further with that, and I'm gonna talk about that. But first, we'll start with the clean sound. Uh, I'm really impressed with this clean sound, so. Now, I call this Axis Clean because I made all these sounds for the Axis. The Axis is the um, green guitar that I play live. This is a 1996 Van Halen Music Man, which is roughly the same guitar. But uh, I'm using that today because my Axis is on the road with the gear. Um, so this sounds pretty close. So let's we'll see what I have going on here. Um, first, I have a compressor. I have the chorus. This is without the chorus. It still sounds nice without the chorus. Because sometimes you use chorus to dress up like a not so nice clean sound, but I really like this one. That delay you're hearing is the transistor tape model. I never really used those kinds of, you know, um, really uh, affected, dirty sounding delays, but on this, I really like it and I'm getting used to it. Especially this one, the transistor tape is just beautiful. I love that. And then over here, I have my gain uh, block, which is on. This is basically an attenuator. I keep this down three decibels, so if I ever need a boost, I just... And with all my presets, I have the delay mix mapped to the expression pedal. Uh, this also has a wah, when you press down. So let's talk about the amp model and the important stuff. So for the amp, I'm using the their US double normal, which is based on a twin reverb, the normal channel. And I'm also using their impulse response feature, which I really think is cool. So I'll go over there. So this uh, pink block, that's the impulse response. And I bought impulse responses from a company called Ownhammer. That's ownhammer.com. And um, the ones I liked the best were the Line 6, not the Line 6, the, um, the Mesa Boogie. It's a closed back 412. That's the sound I'm used to, closed back 412. And I think these were uh, V70s. Um, which is the um, higher wattage Celestians. And uh, this particular impulse response is mic'd with, a, I think it's an SM7. And um, what I like about Ownhammer is they give you like hundreds of impulse responses when you buy one particular cabinet. So for example, you'll get like a microphone with the, the um, a cabinet with the microphone and the cone, and then they keep moving it out a few, like an inch away from the cone until you get to the edge. So it's almost like when you're scrolling through the impulse responses, you're moving the microphone. And I find that really nice because, you know, I usually mic my own cabinet when I'm doing live gigs because I like to, you know, really get the tone I want from the microphone. So I thought that was awesome. I also have some reverb going on here. And that's the uh, chamber. I'll turn the delay off so you can hear the chamber. One thing I want to mention is I'm going mono right now. It's just the way we do it with Blue Oyster Cult. I have one channel and um, it keeps things a little neater. 
So, and it makes things easier. And I'm really trying to use this to make it easier. This goes direct into the PA and we have a little wedge on stage with some stage volume, but I'm trying to make this as simple and straightforward as possible. So you'll see how I have this set up. I have the bottom four foot switches. These are my presets and the top four, these are my effects within the preset. I love that. That's how it worked on the HD 500, which is what I used before this. And I kept, I kept this uh, similar signal flow. Now, something I really love about this that I discovered the night while I was playing, um, if you want to change something, like say for example on my delay, I want, let's say, less feedback. Let's say that's too many taps. If I hold down mode, it tells me all of the uh, effects or you know processors that I have in my chain. So I go to the delay, transistor tape, and it gives me all the parameters for that effect. So then I go to feedback. So now I can hold down this button and I change the feedback on the fly during the gig. And if you hold down exit, you can save that. I thought that was a really smart, smart feature. And a lot of these features I think are really well thought out. Another one I want to talk about is the global EQ. Now this is something that was also in the HD 500, but it's just really, really handy. And I want to show it to you guys. The whole screen and the interface of this is beautiful. So here's my global EQ. And um, what's really nice is you have the option to apply the EQ to either the XLR output, the quarter inch output, or both. So what that's for is say I want to send the XLR signal to the PA and that's going to be the same every night and you know that's I don't want to mess up our front of house engineer. I can just apply the EQ to the quarter inch going to a stage monitor. That way I can tweak what I'm hearing without messing up the, the house sound engineer. Right now I have the EQ bypassed but these high cuts, the high cut and low cut, that's really key because sometimes when you go direct with a modeling amplifier like this, you hear like a certain amount of fizz, like a fizziness, like this high end, you know, buzz. And that's just, you know, that's the way it sounds. But if you can put that high cut on, you can dial that out and it gets really sweet sounding. So I think that's a really good feature. When people have a pedal board, and this is what, um, analog pedal board people have been complaining about with these sorts of multi effects or modeling processors is that if I want to change something I got to go through menus it's not like reaching down on a pedal board and say I want to like you know raise the attack time on my compressor pedal all I have to do is go down and turn that knob well it's the same thing now with this unit all I have to do is touch the pedal that I used to bypass the compressor, this one, and everything's color coded and labeled with the scribble strips, which is awesome. And boom, there's all of the key parameters for the compressor. So it's pretty much the same as using a pedal board where you just reach down, you go to the pedal you want to change, and there's all the knobs. And you can just change them, you know, on the fly. It's really cool. Although, that mode thing before that I showed you where you hold down this button, I think that's even cooler than a pedal board because you can't do that with a pedal, with a pedal board. Uh, so let's move on. So my second sound here, this is my like gritty sort of slightly broken up sound. I use a lot. This is like a rhythm sound, a lead sound. This is like that in between, really nice sound. Like if I play it softly, it's sweet, but if I play it hard, it gets compressed and broken up. And I love that. That's really useful for me. So I did something really interesting in this. Now, this Helix, the Line 6 Helix, has a snapshot feature. That's very useful. And this is like if you have your whole signal flow, your whole rig set up, you can change, you know, dials on each effect and save them as snapshots and recall them. That's great, but that didn't work with my signal flow or my um, my workflow, I should say, with the presets on the bottom 
and the effect bypasses on the top because then I'd have to sacrifice one of those for snapshots. But what I did instead is I found a really, really neat feature. So I want you guys to look at my drive setting here. Now, right now, it's off. But when I click it in, I get more drive and I get less high end, less tone. So here's how I did that. I'm not actually adding a distortion pedal. I have one distortion pedal on in this chain. Here's what's going on here. I have the um, Centaur distortion, sorry, the Minotaur distortion, which is based on the Klon. And that's going into the, um, the twin reverb again with the same own hammer impulse response. Now that's on all the time. That's on right now. When I click on this, I'm actually raising the level of the gain and lowering the tone on that pedal. And here's how you do that. I thought this was really interesting. What you do is you go to controller assign. You go to whatever effect you want to do that with. And you have all these parameters. So what I did is I went to the gain and the gain when this is off, the gain is at four. And when this is on, the gain is at eight. And I assigned it to foot switch two, which is this. And the tone I also assigned to foot switch two. Uh, and this goes backwards. When the gain is lower, I have the tone at 2.7. And when it's higher, I have it at 1.1. So when I do that one pedal press, it does those two parameters. And I think you can map a lot of parameters to one pedal. I haven't really experimented too much with that, but I think that's awesome. So instead of having to put another effect in my block, I can just change the settings on one that's already there with a foot switch press. That is very, very useful, and I'll be using that an awful lot. So um, every one of my presets has a wah in it, and different wahs just to you know match whatever I'm doing. I have a trim in here. That's supposed to be tapped. I got to fix that. I'm probably going to change to the bias trim. This is something I just tried out. What's really cool about this is you can swap pedals in and out you know, for each gig. I think that's awesome. Um, the delay on this is a, is a uh, an emulation I really like. This is vintage digital, and I don't know what this is supposed to be copying, but this gives you like, sort of like a 90s rack effect to my ears, where you can change the bit rate and the sample rate, so. <laughs> I really like that sort of lo-fi, you know, slap. That's awesome. And again, I have my, uh, my uh, 3 dB attenuation here. That's on all my patches. Okay, the next one is my main sound that I use for the entire night. This is my crunch, you know, heavy distortion. This is my meat and potatoes, you know, rock sound. This is the angle model, um, let me go over to that, going through the own hammer boogie cabinet. So I'm using impulse responses for everything. Another processor I use on here a lot is this um, five band EQ, the Cal EQ EQ. Um, this is like the graphic EQ on a Mesa boogie amp and I really like these five frequencies they selected. They're very useful for guitar, um, you know, then you can really sculpt your sound. So between this and another great, great feature is on the impulse response, you have the high cut and the low cut. And I really use these to get the sounds right. I mean, the sounds, they sound good to begin with, but this really helps you sculpt them, especially the high cut. I mean, look how low I have it over here. I have it at 4.2. So that's very useful for me um, in terms of getting the right response that I want from my presets. But anyway, this is the um, Angle Meteor. And I have the drive really low here because I really like the tone of that amp, but I didn't want all the, you know, crazy metal distortion. Like here with this, I can still play chords with this without it getting too like, you know? Um, now on this particular preset, instead of doing the gain trick that I did with the last one, I opted to do a uh, Tube Screamer in front of it 
because that's like a common sort of, uh, you know, metal trick just to get the amp to get even more saturated. And this is when I have to take this sound and get really like chuggy or, you know, like. And it changes the character a little bit, but in a really pleasing way. I think the distortion pedal models on this are really awesome. I'm very impressed with them. I also have the uh, Trinity Chorus again on this. And I have that vintage digital delay again. Always tied to this expression pedal and the wah. Let's see what kind of wah that is. That's the um, the weeper. I think that's awesome. That I can do that. Everything with the with the foot control. This is just really cool. One of my favorite uh, features about this, and this is going to sound silly, but check out this tuner. It's big and bright, it's beautiful. <laughs> okay, moving on. Here's my lead sound. So, I have a similar thing happening with this uh, to my other preset before. This is just a drive boost. This basically just turns the drive up on the amp, so. So right now the drive's on six, and that's my that's where I play most of the time. But if I want even more, I just hit that, and it doesn't like add anything to the signal path. It just turns the drive up on the amp, and you can do that from your feet, and that's amazing to me. I have a chorus here, the regular uh, the regular chorus. Now here's something interesting that I do on this preset. Here, now you'll, you'll hear that I have a delay on already. This, when I click this, this bypasses the delay I have on and kicks on another delay. So this is a multi-function switch, this green one. Another interesting thing is you can make any of these switches any color and say anything you want. So it, you're not limited by what this assigns you. So now it says dotted delay. So let's say I tap, I'll tap eighth notes here. Now if I play this sort of thing, um, which is what I do during last days of May, I can get this nice delay. That's dependent on my tap tempo. So that's how I do that, and then I just switch it off when I want to go back to playing regular lead. But when I click this in, this bypasses the um, expression. That's always like a high mix, no matter where my expression pedal's at. So I think that pretty much covers it, and that's how I'm using this right now. And like I said, I'm going to, this is going to evolve as I keep learning this and get better at it, I'm sure. I'm going to do different things, and I'm part of all the Facebook groups now, so I'm going to learn tricks from you guys, and uh, maybe you learned something from this video, even though I just cracked it open. But that was the most impressive thing about this. Everything is laid out the way it ought to be laid out. I mean, I didn't even go into the what's on the back of this, but that's well documented from other videos. But every kind of connection you can possibly want is here. There are four loops for stomp boxes or, you know, doing a four cable method. They thought of every possible way you can use this thing and implemented features to make it easy and fast for you to do, and I really appreciate that. So I'm really looking forward to getting to know this device better, and if you like this video, please like it and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.